Hello and welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I'm Timmy Tokwe Fagbemi. Burundi's president, Pierre Nkurunziza, who has ruled his country since 2005, has launched a referendum campaign to prolong his stay in power until 2034. The campaign is aimed at adopting a draft constitution that will allow him to serve another two seven-year terms from 2020. While speaking to his supporters at the central Gitenga village, President Nkurunziza said those who oppose his bid by speech or action would cross the red line. This announcement comes after the government launched a funds drive for the 2020 elections. But the move which the government says is voluntary has been condemned by rights groups as organized robbery. Opposition figures in exile also say the referendum will be the funeral of the country's 2000 peace agreement that ended a 13-year civil war in which more than 300,000 people were killed. Burundi plunged into crisis in 2015 when President Nkurunziza refused to step down after his term ended. The crisis has resulted in violent attacks which have seen an estimated 2,000 people killed and thousands displaced to neighboring countries. As we speak, talks between the government and opposition groups have collapsed. Former Tanzanian President Benjamin Nkapa, who is facilitating the talks, said there was no agreement, no declaration and no binding documents. Now let's get more insight into this issue from Professor Victor Arioli of the University of Lagos. You're welcome to Diplomatic Channel. Yeah, thank you, Dr. for inviting me. Now, what do you make of President Pierre Nkurunziza's bid to extend his rule till 2034? Well, I think he wants to commit suicide. After getting third term, I don't see why he wants to go further. Maybe it's in a bid to test uh, his sponsors who have given him a strong uh, you know, assurance that they will be beside him. And I'm very sure they are going to disappoint him at the end of the day. Now, Burundi has faced a lot of crisis since April 2015 when President Nkurun Caesar ran for and got a third term in office. What effect is this bid likely to have on Burundi and the Great Lakes region? It's going to be disastrous for sure. Kagame won't allow him, and those in Congo Democratic Republic won't also see his uh, tenure as worthy of helping their own case. And so the Burundians are going to have a tough moment with him if he ever succeeds. And I just wonder, I don't think he will succeed. But if he ever, ever succeeds, it will turn out to be like uh, what you have in Congo Democratic Republic with... Uh, after the death of uh, uh, Mobutu. And uh, the crisis will continue, continue, and ne nobody knows when it will ever end. So now, it's you, better stopped. You said President Paul Kagame of Rwanda will not allow that to happen. Mm. What is his concern with this, with what's happening in Burundi? Yeah, whatever be the case, we know Burundi and uh, Rwanda are the two Hutu Tutsi dominated uh, countries. Here we know in Burundi, Hutus are dominating, and in, in Rwanda, Tuts, uh, Hutu is dominating also, but they are ruled by Kagame. Most of the Hutus are not too comfortable with the rule of uh, Kagame, and uh, they expect their own to be in Burundi, while Kagame still remains in Tutsi, if uh, so desired. And then they wouldn't be very happy for Kagame to have a say in what goes on in Burundi. And definitely, Kagame is interested in having a say in what goes on in Burundi. Mm. And uh, the powers that surround Kagame, who so far has done better than Nkuriziza, will definitely have his uh, way if uh, things uh, continue the way Nkuriziza is going about it. Now, looking at the Great Lakes region, Paul Kagame has been in power for so long. Pierre Nkurunziza wants to rule till 2034. Even in the DRC, Joseph Kabila is trying his possible best to cling on to power. Yeah, but what, what, why is it so peculiar to the Great Lakes region? Is there any particular reason? No, the reason is that the great powers of this world are interested in what goes on in that Great Lakes. Because that's most of the mineral resources they use in doing whatever they are doing. They get it from there. And by splitting them and dividing them, they have access to those mineral resources. I mean, someone claimed it's a very, it's a catastrophic region in terms of re mineral resources. Not less than 20 of the mineral resources that are very powerfully used 
in current uh, electronic uh, industry and uh, are found there. So the powers that be, if I should name them China, America, uh, US, uh, China, America, Britain, uh, Russia, they are there fighting to see what they can get out of the Great Lakes. And uh, they have been doing that for long. Now, in order to achieve this B to rule till 2034, President Nkurunziza has launched a campaign to promote a referendum to change the constitution. Do you see him winning this referendum? That's what I'm saying. I don't think he's going to win. I think it's a way to test those powers behind him who want him to assure them that he is going to be in power so that they will keep on exploiting what they're exploiting. But uh, uh, with other powers also, striving to outdo him, I don't think they will, they will allow him to get up to that 20, uh, 2034. He's expecting himself to be there. He won't have that chance. It's not going to be easy. What role should the African Union be playing in this Penal elongation crisis, and does the African Union, does any African leader actually have the moral right to mediate? In That's the, the problem with Africa, really. Leadership issue in Africa is not like we see it in other democratic, uh, developed uh, nations. You know, it's like people want to be there as an elder or haven't tasted it. They wouldn't allow others to take hold of it. Like Ahmadou Kuruma, a writer, said, it's uh, it always a, a democratic vote process that is dictated by the widest beast. The beast that claim that is widest among them cast the uh, winning vote. And it's a block vote, sort of. So it's like the vote of the oligarchs or the cabals. They come together, and who is the widest among them take over the cake and uh, decide to share it, you know. That's exactly what is going on, and uh, it's not helpful. All of them are in, engaged in such uh, practice. So who will really build the cart? It's a very difficult thing. But the NGOs can come in and see how best we can. After all, we had peer review mechanism in, uh, in the AU. Where is the peer review mechanism? Where is the NEPAD, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, agreement? All these things should really be put in motion so that it will curb the excesses of some of, some of them. Why is it peculiar to African leaders? Why, why do we have this tendency to cling on to power? Is there any particular reason? Well, that? traditionally, you know, in Africa, they say the king would not like anybody to influence his thoughts and whatever. And then it means that the moment he's there as the king, the king is everlasting. He does not, uh, he's never toppled. It remains so. And the king in Africa, he has no father in effect. He is the father of all and decides how best to handle uh, everybody. Those is, uh, whether they are enemies or they are favorites or psychophants, he knows how to handle them. So it's a traditional issue that, you see, we have to find a way to modernize it. Elder called the African democratic process democracy of the elders or the com democracy of the oligarchs, or the com democracy of the cabals, so that they can pick among them the eldest person to be in charge of the cabal or in charge of the ruling process. So it's a very difficult issue. It's a, it's a traditional issue that needs to be revisited and completely reworked to have a better way for Africans. You know.